prompting can be really hard. And prompting for vibe coding just means asking AI to write code to build something to take what's in our head and turn it into a working application. And so it's no surprise that that's a really hard thing to do. And today I'm going to break down exactly why your prompts fail and talk about my approach to context engineering that I think will help you get unstuck on most of your vibe coding and really any other prompt to AI. So let's jump into it. There are really only two reasons a prompt could fail. And that is either that AI made an error or you made an error. It might be a little unsettling to hear. Now there's a bit more to it, so let's let's break it down logically. So there are two reasons that the prompt might fail, but there are actually three reasons you might have failed. And there are some other reasons or things we can do to kind of try and help AI out, right? So if you made an error, what could that error possibly have been? Well, it had to do with the information that was contained within that prompt. You could have not provided enough information to AI. You might have provided irrelevant or confusing information to AI, or you could have provided poorly formatted information. This also kind of falls under confusing, right? Now, if AI made the error, so if AI made an error, you can revise your approach. You can try maybe building something simpler. Um, often I find that simplification is the best way to solve this problem, but it just requires you to change your strategy. If the error is on your side, it's more about the information that you're providing to the model. And we call this context. Now, maybe you've heard about the term context engineering versus prompt engineering or context window as the amount of information AI can kind of hold. And so let's oversimplify this a little bit. Here's an example interaction that I had with agent. I was like kind of mad yesterday, you know, and I was like, I'm going to take it out on AI. I said, he didn't do what I wanted you to do, fix it. Notice here, I'm not providing any new information. Then I said, this is terrible. Not only am I not providing any information, I'm interrupting the original process. I'm being negative. This is just bad vibes. Uh, and then finally, we said some words that I can't say on this show, uh, or on this channel rather. Um, and again, no new information and an expletive. This isn't helpful for anyone. And I'm not actually providing any new information. So imagine if you were like my coworker and I was like, man, I really want you to help me do this thing. And then I'm just basically berating you for not getting it done. That's not going to solve any problems. Why isn't it going to solve any problems? Because there's no new context in this inf information. So let's talk about context a little bit. What do we mean when we say context? Well, a context window is the amount of tokens an LLM can process at a given time. Basically, it's like how long your prompt can be. Context can be the prompt we provide to the LLM, but it can also be other things, right? It can be images that you attach, documentation that you attach, errors um, from the console, from your app, uh, details about your app environment or other preferences. And because LLMs might have data training data or lack details about our implement implementation or what we want, right? The most important thing is what we want. We need to provide additional context or information to help them understand those things. And you can think about that, right? A bit like being like a painter or an artist. You're assembling this canvas of context that we're going to provide to an LLM. Now, what else? Prompting is important, but context is just as important, if not more important. And what do I mean? Because those two things could be very similar. Well, prompting is kind of like an incantation or like a uh, specific phrase or way that you evoke information from an LLM. For example, telling an LLM to do something rather than telling an LLM not to do something. Being positive is actually uh, a better prompting technique than being negative. But context is actually the actual contents of the prompt. So. What are some things that, you know, some examples that, that could be really useful here? Uh, specifics, instructions, or information to influence outputs. Knowing the lingo, right? If you know about CSS, cascading style sheets, you might say border radius instead of how much, how rounded are the corners. You might say introduce, uh, a, you know, a uh, higher border radius. That's just saying the exact same thing, but an LLM would interpret that a little bit better. You do the exact same thing with the padding or margin around certain elements rather than saying, make it more space, right? That just sounds weird. Um, we also know this from like emotional or design words. For example, saying the word minimalist often evokes a specific resp response from an LLM or saying, you know, use uh, a design inspired by Johnny Ive or Steve Jobs, right? Those words are associated with certain design principles that often get us the results that we want from an LLM. Very similarly, right? Providing documentation on how to do something can help an LLM implement it properly. Um, using the right keywords or tools 
right? A lot of LLMs have web search now. So if you just say do research, you can get the outcome that you want. And this is actually true in Agent and Replit. I work for Replit, uh, so shout out there. You can say do research on specific frameworks for creating vectors from images. Agent's going to do that, and it's going to use it's going to get more accurate results than if you just asked it to write that code from its memory uh, or from its training data. Same thing is true of images or designs for models that can interpret those things. And it's also true of code samples or sample implementations. So these are all elements of context that we can provide to LLMs to get the outputs we want. And so to really drive that home, prompt engineering focuses on clever wording or specific phrasing. I have about 10 prompting tips in an old video that I'll link here. It's still very relevant and useful. If you want more prompt engineering tips, check that out. But it's limited to how we phrase a task, and it's kind of just like giving somebody a sticky note, right? There's not much information there. There's only so many things you can do to convey a digital information on a sticky note. Context engineering, by contrast, is a system for providing comprehensive context, which includes things like documentation, examples, and patterns that we're talking about today. It's kind of like writing a full screenplay, like with all the details. There's so much more information and types of information that you can include in that screenplay. That's really useful for AI. And so here is my uh, approach for learning context engineering or practicing context engineering. First, come up with a prompt to an LLM. This is how we learn. Let's start with a prompt. Did it work? If so, move on. You're good. If not, we're going to have to ask ourselves, was it my fault? I'm not the best at this, right? Some might say I'm obstinate or stubborn. You're learning vocab words today. You know, ex-girlfriends, potentially. Um, but we have to really, you know, reflect. We have to be uh, true to ourselves and say, did we make an error here? Now, if we did make an error, it's pretty likely related to the context that we supplied. So we have to ask ourselves, did we not give enough context? Did we give too much context? Or did we give messy context? And if one of those things is true, can we change the way that we're providing context? Maybe taking an information instead of a description. Maybe taking a screenshot instead of writing a description. Maybe providing a URL of an example instead of um, explaining what we want. Or getting a snippet from the error logs and providing that to our AI. Now, if we're perfect, much like I am, we would have to revise our approach. And that might be simplifying things. It might be using checkpoints or rolling back to our old state before we kind of um, broke our app uh, and trying again. And that's also valid. But this is my approach to context engineering. Now I want to talk about a very specific instance of context engineering, and that is our first prompt. How much information do we provide on the per first prompt? Should I ask Claude for a PRD? Do I go rogue and just like write a novel? Um, product managers, designers, uh, you know, marketers, they, they often me, ask me this question all the time, and I want to give a really good answer. So let's break it down. We're going to break this down, and I'm going to have an answer for you in the next five minutes. First, consider instructing a junior developer, or really anyone. If I send them a 50,000 word essay, yeah, forget a junior developer. Anybody in your life, if you send them a text message that's longer than like a paragraph, I mean, I don't have anybody to send text messages to because I don't have any friends, but think about your friends and all the people that are important to you. If you send them more than a paragraph, do they even read it? The answer is no. Will they miss details? Yes, 100%. They will miss all the details. So <laughs> cross out 50,000 words here and just like literally a paragraph. Um, are these words necessary? Do they convey um, importance? Are they helping accomplish our goal? These are all really important things because the mistake I see all the time is that users drop kind of copy pasta LLM outputs into vibe coding tools and they expect to get what they want. They expect um, to get a perfect output and they get upset when they don't. But the very truth of the matter is if you do that, if you say, hey, ChatGPT, write me this PR PRD and then you copy paste, the inputs are irrelevant or they have incompatible tech. It might be like use MongoDB and Redis and all this other stuff for our vibe coded app, which doesn't make any sense. You might not even know what those things are. You're probably better off. Um, it's confusing. The inputs are incredibly verbose, so they're like 10,000 words long, and our LLM is going to miss um, important sections in the middle. It's actually called context rot. There's a paper written about this. I'll link it in the description as well. Just like a person, if you give an LLM a bunch of information and then bury something important in the middle, the LLM often recounts or um, analyzes the wrong thing. So this is important and or the inputs do not convey any meaningful information. And these three things should look familiar because there are exact three errors from what you could be doing wrong in prompting AI. So a lot of times if you go to ChatGPT and you're like, write me a PRD, and then you paste it in, 
you're probably doing all three of these things. So my answer is not do not do that, as I will show you in a second here. My answer is we have to be more nuanced. So say you're coming up with an idea and you're really, you know, stuck or you really need some help with a prompt. Let's examine two options. So my two options are we're going to send both these prompts to Claude. One, write me a PRD for a simple app that allows my team to vote on restaurant options and features the ability to create an account and stores data persistently. That's option one. Two, using docs.replit.com, understand the Replit platform and help me come up with a simple prompt for an app that allows my team to vote on restaurant options and features the ability to create an account and stores data persistently. Okay, we're gonna do this live and I'm pretty sure the outcome from this is going to tell you all you need to know. So first prompt, let's see what we get. Write me a PRD for simple app that allows my team to vote on restaurant options. And off the bat, this is a lot. Now we're talking about user personas. I don't know about you, I've never sent a user persona to an AI and got good results. So let's break this down. Product name, okay. Version, irrelevant. Document over, irrelevant. Executive summary, potentially useful, but verbose. Product vision, irrelevant. Primary users, this, this is all irrelevant information. User personas, I talked about that. Now we have account management, um, that's great. Uh, restaurant poll creation looks great. Poll management, okay, this is, this is like an important functionality. Voting interface, voting options, results and analytics, historical data, data management, persistent storage, data security, encrypted password storage, user sessions. We're defining database schemas, polls, tables. This is often like schema management and data architecture. You just leave that up to the LLM as it's building the app. Specifically describing this thing, is actually going to cause us more trouble than we'd like. Um, technology stack. Now, this is huge because if you're watching this video and you're a vibe coder, the technology stack is actually dependent on the platform that you use, right? If I'm using Replit, there are technology stacks that work well with Replit. There are things that Replit does really well. There are things that Replit can't do currently. And if I tell an AI to do something that Replit can't do, I'm going to get really bad outcomes. So, you know, WebSockets, AI is is it's web sockets are hard like ai would totally mess this up um so i'm just calling out things right i think i said something about redis and mongodb earlier there you go um <laughs> cloud hosting this would totally destroy any llm that you put this in drop this in any tool this is going to be a really bad outcome so basically what i'm showing you is even this simple uh request to write a prd this is an unusable output and it would be a very bad prompt so now let's give our second prompt a shot. So what I want to point out here is that the only thing I changed about this prompt is that I said use the Replit docs. If you haven't visited the Replit docs, by the way, um, I know a guy who wrote a lot of them. Pretty great guy. Um, and there's a lot of useful information there. So you should check them out. <laughs> um, but honestly, we, the whole team at Replit, spends a lot of time on our documentation. We're really pr proud of it. So definitely check that out. And what I'm seeing here, right? What what Claude is doing is it's doing research on the Replit documentation and understanding the platform. So now we understand kind of how to tie in our features. Now Claude understands how to tie in the features that we want into our application. Let's take a look here. User authentication. We want a login system and we know the technology we're using for this login system. We want restaurant management. That's great. Um, we want a voting system. Also, I'm not sure why this is much more um, terse and uh, relevant, right? We need data persistence. And so we're using Replit's uh, database uh, to store this information. Um, we have some technical requirements, but these are all supported by Replit. I would uh, honestly remove the front end back end requirements here from this prompt and just let Replit agent decide because that's another AI that we're handing things off to, right? But this is much better. I would also leave out these schema ideas. This would be confusing. I would leave out the additional f features as well. Um, this on, on the whole, honestly, I love it when I get to prove a point, and this is an exam exact example of what I was talking about. This is much more short to the point, and this would make, I would say, up to the technical requirements section, all of that, excellent prompt, drop the front end, back end, 
Um, honestly, you could just drop all of this because they're already mentioned elsewhere in the prompt and that's redundant data. Uh, everything up to here and maybe this user interface section is excellent. So now what have we established? Well, if we come back to kind of our decision tree here, we were here before, right? We were coming up with prompts to our LLM, but if you're really stuck, we can kind of go up the uh, go up the ladder here and we can do research on the right context to include in our prompts. And that might involve asking AI for help and it probably involves simplifying those outputs. More importantly, it involves pointing AI to the right tools, whether that's web, web search or the Replit documentation or sources of information, right? The Replit documentation. And those things will help us come up with a prompt to the LLM that we can then provide. That second prompt we got from Claude, absolutely excellent for providing to Replit. Then we can go through the exact same feedback loop. Did it work? Yes. Continue. No, was it my fault? If not, revise your approach, simplify, roll back. If so, there's probably not enough context. There might be too much context or there might be messy context. So this is how I think about context engineering. And this is how you can break down really complicated problems and start to solve them through code because it's not easy to prompt AI. It's not easy to get what you want from these systems. But if you follow these steps, if you think about the context that you're supplying and the prompts that you're supplying, I promise you will get closer. Again, I'm Matt with Replit. This has been how I think about context engineering, how I think about prompt engineering. Until next time, peace.